evening. Welcome to another edition of Focus. I am your host, Tim Thomas. We're glad you've joined us for this special edition of our program. Hey, guess what? We're in Mar Park here in the city of Madisonville, and we're in the library room, I think, uh, of the Mar Park, and uh, we're just glad that you've tuned into our program. Our thanks to Barbara Hunt and all her associates for allowing us to come out here. If you have not been out to the Mar Park and seen this beautiful facility, let me encourage you to do so as the weather warms up. We're going to plan on being outside uh, on the patio doing some taping as well, but overlooks the this beautiful lake out here. And uh, a lot of great programs that are going to be coming forward for uh, the Mar Park area. So we encourage you to Google it and get involved with what Mar Park is doing here in the city of Madisonville. But I'm also excited because I have my very good friend, my brother in Christ, and uh, I really think he's a brother from another mother. <laughs> uh, my good friend, Brother Todd Hill. Welcome back to Focus. We've been trying to hook up, get yes. this going, yes. and uh, but the Lord does it in His time. In His time, and that's what we're excited about. He and his beautiful wife Michelle have uh, sponsored Crossfire. Uh, here, if you've heard of Crossfire, you know what it has meant to people of this region, not just this community, but people of this region. The tent revivals and. Uh, the laying on of hands and how the Lord has just blessed through this ministry continues to be an asset uh, to all of us, to all of us. And, and Brother Todd, when, when we just look back and just think about the saying is the goodness of Jesus goodness. Yes. and all he's done for us. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's, we can't do nothing but just shout hallelujah. Yes, you're it's, right. Yeah, 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 it's powerful. We're talking about encounters today. That's right, encounters. It's, you know, just... Uh, and Tim, it is very humbling as you look back at what all that Jesus has done because, you know, all we can do is, you know, I remember the Lord spoke to me one time and said, if you'll make time and place, mm -hmm. and if the people will show up, I'll show up because he wants to encounter his people. You know, the Bible is about an encounter. It starts in the garden after he creates Adam and Eve and he walks in the garden with them daily in the cool of the day. Yeah. It's an encounter. Mm -hmm. And then after they sin and then he, he chooses for himself a group of people. Um, and then he sets up the uh, tabernacle, and it's a place of encounter. Mm -hmm. His presence is in the holy of uh, holies, uh, holiest of holies. And so it's always about an encounter. He's, you know, through the wilderness, he's the the uh, cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Yeah. So it's always about an encounter. When Jesus comes, they say his name will be Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Yes. So. You know, kind of what you mentioned, <clears throat> we've been trying to get together since November. Right. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was excited about, you know, Thanksgiving, but actually just living a life of thanks living every day, being thankful, <laughs> you know, uh, for the air that we breathe. Or, yes. You know, um, and well, in fact, this just made me think of a testimony of something that happened to me um, last spring. Last spring, I, I had some bare places in my yard, so I worked a couple of days putting sod down. Of course, not being used to it, I was sore in my legs and back. But Sunday morning before church, I went and sat on a bench at the corner of my property underneath a shade tree that I planted. And I was just sitting there. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I had this encounter. The wind blew. I, was, I just started thanking Jesus. I thanked him for the pain in my body because if I was dead, I wouldn't feel that. I was thinking just for life, for the grass, for the sun, for the birds. And all of a sudden, this breeze blew. And, man, it just hit me. Mm -hmm. And, man, I just started weeping. Because I thanked him, again, for the pain in my body, for the aches, but for the grass, for the birds, for the sun, for the breeze. Because for... sometimes hmm. we live so unaware of the simple things that the Lord provides. I mean, I had a garden right there that mm -hmm. I was just planted, and he's the one, you know, we can put the seed in the ground. Yes. But we can't cause it to bring forth <laughs> right. fruit, you know. We can yeah. plow the ground. Mm -hmm. We can plant the seed, but we can't do others. So... You know, I've been thinking about encounter, and it's, you know, I looked up the definition. It's a face-to-face -face meeting, mm -hmm. and God wants us to encounter him. Mm -hmm. You know, even the word of God, you know, the Bible says in Romans ten seventeen, that faith comes by hearing and hearing mm -hmm. by the word of God. Yes. The word of God is to cause us to have faith, to have an encounter, to have a manifestation of the God of the word. Yes. That's what it's for. It's about an encounter. And so I was just... I was thinking about, and, and Tim, because I, I want you to share here just a minute about mm -hmm. an encounter you had recently, but mm -hmm. 
Do you realize that after Jesus ascended, none of the books of the New Testament were written for about 20 years? Mm -hmm. And so what did the disciples go around preaching? A little bit of the Old Testament, mm -hmm. but he fulfilled it, and people who were not Jewish did not really grasp that. Sure. But they were mainly releasing the power of testimony, which was their encounter. Mm -hmm. And then when Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John write their books, this is their life walking with Jesus, mm -hmm. their encounter yeah him. yeah and so i truly believe that god wants us to encounter him daily not yes. just not just mm -hmm. you know when, when it's a tough time or not on a sunday morning sunday morning is just a corporate gathering mm -hmm. of the body of christ but what about whenever maybe uh you're thirty six thousand feet up in the jet and you're having a tough moment or you're 500 mm. feet deep and five miles back in the coal mine and you're having a tough mm -hmm. moment mm. you know so can can people that are that are not Christians uh, do they encounter Jesus and don't realize what they're encountering? Well, you know, I think on earth you can never live apart from the presence of God, but we can live unaware. It's yeah. like I said, you know, some people walk out of their house today on a spring, April first morning, and there's birds singing and they won't even hear them. They'll be unaware. Um, you know, I've even I've heard the statement that April 1st is the atheist holiday. It's April Fool's Day because Psalms 14.1 says a fool in his heart says there is no God. Mm -hmm. But I had an encounter. It's funny. I had an encounter with the atheist one time underground. Um, in the mines. In the mines. Mm -hmm. I'm running the continuous miner. Um, this was, a, I had probably hadn't even been saved a year. So it was about 1995 probably. 94, 95. It had to be. So. And this older gentleman, quite a bit older, uh, he's with a certain company, comes up and we're looking at a new product and all. And I always, anytime I find an opportunity to share uh, my testimony of Jesus, I'm going to share it. And so I kind of mentioned him. And so he looks at me and he goes, well, I'm an atheist. And I said, really? He goes, yeah. I said, well, that's interesting. <laughs> you know, I, I'm thinking, okay. And I thought, well, I was at one time myself, you know. But he goes, so, but he said, there's really, you know, no proof. Can you prove that there's Jesus. I said, so I'm trying to think, you know, I'm going, well, there's a, I have a book called a Bible that was written over a period of about 14 to 1500 years, 40 different authors, three different languages. It's <laughs> still relevant. I said, in fact, Jesus fulfilled about 365 prophecies, you know, in his death, burial, resurrection, his life and all that, his birth. Yes. He goes, well, there's books older, writings older than that. And I'm going, okay. You know, he kind of got me, oh, I'm thinking. Then I said, well, uh, there's a church, an organization that's still alive today, about 2000 years old and he goes there's groups that are still like that so I'm thinking you know he's kind of refuted that and so I was thinking and I said well I said on September 24th <laughs> 1994 in a bass boat middle of Barkley Lake <laughs> on my knees I said the name of Jesus twice because I didn't I, I didn't know how to pray mm -hmm. and I said I actually had a vision four days before that about mm. this event and I said in an underground coal mine just like we are right now and I said on that day I lost Half my vocabulary, all the four letter words used to be tough. Yeah. I said, I went home, I was an alcoholic, poured all the alcohol out of the cabin, sat back. With two weeks, within two weeks of just reading the Bible, I burned all the trash in the house, the pornography, you know, and I said, and I'm a different man. Hmm. And he looked at me for a minute, very silent, he walked off because he didn't have a grid for that. He didn't, yes. you know, a man with an argument has nothing for a man with an experience. And hmm. so, very powerful. Yes. So I think, what I think is, and the reason that you go preach the gospel is so unbelievers can hear, because faith comes by hearing, yeah. hearing the word of God, mm -hmm. and so they can have faith to receive. See, a lot of people, I used to even, I, I used to tell God this, you know, it's talking about the healings that we've seen and everything we say. I used to tell God, if you'll start healing people, I'll preach on healing. <laughs> and you know what he put in my heart one day? He said, that's like a farmer out there trying to get a harvest without putting seed in the ground first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he just, it's simple. Mm -hmm. Faith, if I don't release the seed, which is the word of God, people do not have faith to receive. Mm -hmm. Whether it's salvation, freedom, healing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, you see what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. So that's the power of, you know, uh, releasing the word of God and testimony. Yes. Of the face-to-face -face encounters that we've had with the holy God who loves God. us. Yes. You mm. know, it's very powerful. It really it? is. It really is. And there's... There's so many uh, figures in the Bible who have encountered encounters Jesus Christ. Yes. For us to, to go by, for us to relate to. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, the, the the woman who just wanted to touch the hem of his garment. That's it. You know. Yeah, you know what's powerful about that? A lot of people want Jesus to lay hands on them, but she wants to lay her hand on Jesus. She's the one reached yeah, out. Isn't that yeah. powerful? <laughs> what about Saul, Paul? He shared his encounter. He shared his testimony twice. Yes. In there, you know, he shares. It's about, what about the woman at the well who went back told her? <laughs> told the village, come in here, man. <laughs> Tell me everything. See, a man's told me everything. Yeah. And man, yeah. they came. Because she encounter. had a face to face encounter. And he stayed there, I think, in Samaria about three days. Yes. You know, yes. very powerful because mm -hmm. had a face to face. What about blind Bartimaeus? They told him to hush up and he yelled yeah. <laughs> even louder. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. Son yes. of David, have mercy yes. on me. And he received mm -hmm. his sight. Yeah. He was going to have an encounter. Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Climbed up in the sycamore tree. I'm telling Didn't you. realize that but that day would be a change to his life all the way around. I'm telling you. He had that encounter. I'm telling you. Told him to come down. You know what's, what's hard for a lot of people to grasp him is for them to grasp the reality that there's a holy God. The one who created heaven and earth that wants to have a daily encounter. That yearns to hear your voice mm -hmm. in prayer. Father, mm -hmm. it's not a religious voice. Mm -hmm. Father, mm -hmm. you know, just share share what's going on in your life. Just love on him. And when, when I say that, don't give him a you know. If Michelle and I go out on a date and she starts giving me her honeydew list, that's not a date. <laughs> <laughs> what if we just fellowship and just uh -huh. that time? You know, even the word intimacy into me see mm -hmm. into me is revealing the depths of your heart in a face to face encounter with mm -hmm. Jesus. We're changed. It's like yeah. sitting at a Mexican restaurant for 30 minutes and not even eating. When you leave, you have the aroma of that yeah. restaurant. People go, man, you've been to El Brasero down yeah. here. <laughs> How do you know? I can smell it. So, But if you spend this time in his presence and leave, maybe it's one word, but you're mm -hmm. changed and you're different because mm -hmm. it's an encounter. It's an exchange. Mm -hmm. That's true. My pastor talks so much about life's unexpected uh, you know, yeah, things coming up. Coming up, uh, we are faced with those. Yes, life's life's uninvited interruptions is yes. what he calls it. Yes, and uh, those are those are times when we need to encounter absolutely Jesus Christ. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. It's you know it's post Genesis three world we live in a fallen world, mm -hmm. and you know we all have issues that we deal with, and we all have. Bad stuff, so to speak. Unexpected, unpleasant, mm -hmm. uninvited. I love and, that word. And we, will, and we will have those. We will have those. In yes. this world, you should have tribulations, you said, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, let's share about your encounter just yes. a little bit. Yes. So I'm going to share my piece that I want you to you share. You go ahead. Piece. So one day I'm traveling between operations and I stopped by a lake just to. I just, I had a few minutes and I just wanted to stop and just grab fresh air and just spend just a minute with Jesus. That's, that was it. Just, uh, I just, it's just funny how when you hang out by water, I, I don't know. I, don't I love know, it. You yes. know, so, uh, but anyway, and I just spend a few minutes. I get in my truck and I'm leaving and you call me and I'm going to let you run with it. So right. Here. So, so I'm thinking I've got a doctor's appointment this day. I said, I'm just going to call Brother Todd. You know he's in town. Why don't you just come by and have prayer with me, share the word of God with me and have prayer. Well, when I called, uh, I was standing there in the living room talking to him and uh, he, you have to be on the road. He said, my brother, I said, he said, my brother, I tell you what, let, let's just have prayer together. I said, all right. Well, by this time, I'm walking from there out on the porch. This is an early fall morning. It wasn't that warm, just a chill in there. And I'm sitting there on the porch and uh, we shared a beautiful prayer. We prayed together. And then you, you asked me to look for a butterfly. When you get to where you're going, you look for a butterfly as confirmation to this prayer. And no sooner had you got that out of your mouth, <laughs> this, not, not a little small butterfly, but this great big yellow butterfly came out from nowhere, flew right across in front of me, across the porch, on over into the neighbor's yard, <laughs> just that quick. And I have to say it was a chill that came over me, because at that moment I had to stop in the conversation to tell you that. And then you, what happened with you? Well, I was pulling up to a stop sign, and the, and the only reason I said that, because I don't, you know, I'm not into butterflies and unicorns, mm -hmm. but the Lord had spoke that to me to you. Mm -hmm. 
as soon as you speak that, I'm stopping at a stop sign. I can tell you the exact stop sign. And all of a sudden, and you hadn't even told me yellow butterfly yet. And all of a sudden, a yellow, big yellow butterfly That's flew right. right across my windshield. <laughs> and as, as you're telling me, and you say yellow butterfly, I'm going, <laughs> oh my. <laughs> and I told you what had just flown in front of me. Yes. Now go ahead. With right. Me. And so, uh, we shared, you know, and just got excited over we what did. the Lord we had did. already done. Yes. And uh, so I went on to my appointment, uh, and while I was sitting there in the doctor's office, and I asked the nurse, uh, I was telling the nurse about this encounter we had just had earlier today, and she said, well, did you notice that big bush there beside the door when you come in? I said, yeah, I noticed it. She said, uh, she said well, that's a butterfly bush. And it was a piece that came over me mm. that uh, I could not, I, I just can't explain the can't piece. Explain. Peace that surpasses all understanding all is what understand. the Word of God says. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't so, fit here, but it... Right. That's right, right. right. On my way, and on my way, I always read this marquee of this particular church because I always get a blessing out of those marquees. But this particular one always seems like it lines up. It's right on time. Something going, you know, yeah. it never fails. Yeah. This particular morning on my way, I read this marquee, so my feathers dropped because it did not exactly go with what I had just experienced. You know, great, great, whatever it was, it was good. Yeah. <laughs> but it just didn't line up. And uh, so, on my way back, though, coming back home, I passed the same marquee and read the other side. The other side. And the other side of that marquee said, God answers prayers in unexpected ways. Man. Very powerful. I'm telling you, I had to almost pull over the side of the road. <laughs> Have a shout. You know, I'm, I'm telling you. Uh, you know, and just to know how the Lord answers prayers yes. and how he works. Yes. And to have that encounter yes. with him meant so much. It, did, it yeah. does, Tim. And, you know, it's amazing to me that you had in your mind a certain way that you should have been prayed for that day. Yes. Right? Right. Because you wanted me to come by and pray with you, which we've done that at different times. But the way God, I was out of town, so to speak. I mean, I went out. I went that far out, but you were getting ready to have to go and all that. But this is the way how the God met your very need yes. at that moment in the way that he wanted to. Yes. And it ravished your heart. Mm -hmm. It overwhelmed you with his presence and peace. Mm -hmm. And you got a good report from the doctor. That's right. That's the power of encounter. Mm. You know, it's funny. You said you almost wanted to pull over. I remember one time. When my mom had had a car accident, it wasn't her fault, but we had to replace her car, and I was praying about a new, another vehicle for yeah. it. And I wound up at a dealership. Actually, I wanted uh, I, the salesman that worked there I knew real well, a good friend of mine. <clears throat> I happened to walk in, and he's there, and he said, well, I'm off today, but I just happened to stop by. Hmm. Wow. Coincidence, right? Yes. Yeah. So to speak. But uh, Anyway, to make a long story short, he was there. I bought the car from him. He mm -hmm. had just stopped by, I think maybe to pick up his check. He was, a, you know, and... It, everything worked out exact. The exact car mm -hmm. deal, everything. On the way home, I'll never forget. As soon as I crossed the Tradewater River, coming from uh, Crittenden County into Hopkins County, I pulled off in the emergency lane, got out of my vehicle, wow, got on my knees in front of my truck and wept before the Lord. Wow, wow. Because everything <clears throat> was orchestrated to the T. Yes, according to what I believe Mama needed. Mm -hmm. You know. I had a guy tell me years ago, be very specific in your prayers because if you pray whatever, you're already living that. Yes. We've got whatever yes. right now. Yes. Ask God according to your heart, but also have him, you know, delight yourself in the Lord, Lord. and he'll give you the desires of the your heart. heart. If we delight ourselves first, our desires become purified through his mm -hmm. word and will. Mm -hmm. We don't ask, we ask according to his word, not according to our selfish desire. Mm -hmm. But, you know, God wants to bless us. He says if we're willing and obedient, we shall eat the good of the land. Why should we want leftovers if he's promised us the good of the land? Yes. It's amazing, isn't it? It really is. It really is. Encounters. Yes. So, those that are listening to this program today uh, might have just tuned in. <laughs> and it's not really by accident <laughs> that you've tuned in yeah. because this is your way of encountering yeah. what may be needed in your life. <laughs> Todd, talk to those who may just be listening today. <clears throat> well, again, Jesus has paid the price for us to have an encounter. Father, you know, loved us so much, the whole world. Doesn't matter, you know, your economic status. Doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter what side of the tracks you were born on or what family you were born in. It, this doesn't matter. Whenever it says that, you know, he sent his son to die for the whole world. And so that's all inclusive. But 
the power of it is that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God and also hearing testimony. And so we've shared some testimony today. But the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy according to Revelation chapter 19. And it literally means, when you hear testimony, it literally means I'll do it again. What I'll do for one, I'll do for another because he's no respecter of person. Right. You know, there's no big eyes or little U's in the kingdom of God. We all are, you know, we're all uh, are sinners that are saved by, that grace. Saved by grace. And yeah. so we're saved by grace, we serve by grace, and we're sustained by his grace. Yes. You know, and so ultimately, I don't know what it is, you know, in your life that you may be dealing with, but <clears throat> the reality of it is, is that Jesus came and died for our sin. But not only that. Uh, I was sharing this with Tim earlier before we, we started the program, is that he took stripes on his back for our healing. It was less of a price for our healing than it was for our salvation. It cost him his life for our salvation. Yes. But stripes, he didn't die from his stripes for our healing. Yes. And there's a lot of people that believe that God will save them, but that he wants them to suffer for him on this side of, of eternity. They're waiting for heaven to have victory but yet he's called us to be overcomers not to be overcome we're not victims we're victors yes and so by the blood and authority of the Lord Jesus Christ he has paid the price for us to walk in victory to live in victory and to be healed saved delivered mm -hmm. and walk in freedom and the power of the Holy Spirit it's amazing to me that the book of Acts is literally encounter after encounter after encounter with the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, if yes. we're not careful, I, I want to be real careful when I say this right here. The Trinity in a lot, of, a lot of churches is Father, Son, and Holy Bible. There's nothing wrong with the Bible. Don't get me wrong. It takes the Word of God. You know, He's even exalted above His own name. But the power comes by the living Spirit that Jesus sent back on the day of Pentecost who lives inside of all of us to experience the kingdom. We're not really church members, we're kingdom kids. <laughs> we have to get that mindset that we're kids of the kingdom and the spirit of the king lives in us. Yes. And nothing's impossible. All the possibilities of heaven dwell within us. Mm -hmm. And if we will become aware, and sometimes it's we're, we're the ones that have to turn our face towards him. He's just waiting. Mm -hmm. And it's like I said, we, we cannot live apart from his presence but we can live unaware so today I pray that you become aware of a living loving God who died for you hmm. who wants to save you mm -hmm. that means to rescue you from your sin and empower you from living a life of sin mm -hmm. and who wants to heal you and I don't care what the disease is the name of Jesus trumps it every time I don't care Yes. who wants to fill you with his spirit to empower you to live a life worthy of the name of Jesus mm -hmm. Who wants to adopt you into his kingdom as a son and daughter of the Most High God? It's, it's just a simple relationship. It's a yes. simple daily encounter. Mm -hmm. One of the most powerful things is, is when I wake up in the morning, first thing, most every morning, I have a song going on in my heart. Mm -hmm. And that song is the segue into his presence that morning. I just sit down singing that song and I just, sometimes I'll just lean back. It, there's not even a scripture. Mm -hmm. I just rest in his presence. Or I may say, Father... I'm dealing with this today. Or, Father, what's on your heart today? Mm -hmm. Again, it's just a relationship. And a lot of us realize, as you said, when we wake up in the morning and we're laying there before we get up, we, we know what's ahead of us for the day. Yes. Or we have a good idea <clears throat> yeah. of what was taking place yes. or what's going to take place. And that's the time when we need to have that one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. talk with Christ. Exactly. You know, you brought something up. Uh, 2003, had a situation at a coal mine that was very tough. I had a meeting. This was on a Thursday. They had scheduled a meeting, a meeting I dread. It was the only day in my life I ever dread the sun coming up. And, I, and so we were at an elders meeting at the church. And after we had the meeting, I literally told all the elders and the pastor, I said, I hate to say this, but tomorrow I really dread to see the sun come up. I said, I've got a meeting tomorrow that I do not want to go to. And sitting directly across from me was one of the older elders. And he, I'll never forget this, Tim. He pushed away from the table and he dropped his head and he started singing, Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Mm. Because he lives, all fears are gone. Mm -hmm. And when he started that, it was like just the Holy Spirit hit me right here and I just started laughing mm. and laughing. Mm -hmm. And he kept singing and I'm laughing and afterwards we had prayer. And the next day I walked into that meeting and man, God had orchestrated everything. It was the, just the victory in the meeting was so powerful.
because the Bible says the joy of the Lord's our strength. Yes. You know what most adults have lost? <laughs> Their joy. Yeah. They say that kids are in the age of six. Laugh, giggle, and smile over 400 times a day in adults less than 15. <laughs> wow. We need the joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the joy comes from his presence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Psalm 1611 says, uh, he will show us the paths of life. In his presence is fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures from evermore. Mm -hmm. Fullness in his presence. It's mm -hmm. the joy of the Lord gives us strength. Just like that day you needed peace and you got joy with it. That's right. Concerned about yes. a doctor's appointment. Right. So I don't know what you're going through or what you've been through. But I know that the authority that's in the name of the Lord Jesus by the power of Holy Spirit trumps every situation every time. Yes. There's no doubt. And so the word of God and testimony and fellowship mm -hmm. and prayer is to lead us into a face-to-face -face meeting called an encounter with the Holy God. And the very reason we set up the tent. It's a lot of work, but it's a place of freedom yes. for an encounter. The last time we had it up, the last night, a, a woman left her residence with mm. no ID, was going up on the railroad tracks to commit suicide. Mm. And she walks by, sees the tent, comes in, sets down doing worship, and rededicates her life that night. Mm. That was an encounter. Yes. With a living God. So <laughs> we just try to set a time and a place. Just like when you called me that day. Mm -hmm. What were you looking for? You weren't yeah. looking for an encounter with Todd. No. You were looking for an encounter with God, but because fellowship. Yes. And all we can do is pray, love, and believe. Mm -hmm. But God is the one mm -hmm. who saves, yes. heals. Yes. And isn't it good to know that we serve a God who will forgive us, love us, bless us, heal us, yes. in spite in of spite ourselves. Of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in spite of yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, none of us are perfect. Yes. The only one that was perfect, we put on the cross. <laughs> it was simple, but, but you're right. I mean, it's, I mean, he loves us in spite of ourselves. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's power, it you is. know, because yeah. uh, there's days I can give him reasons not to love me. <laughs> but that doesn't change his mind, you know. That's right. My wife, Michelle, um, man, she's, she walks in a deep place with the Lord. And I'll, I'll never forget her. She, she said this a long yeah. time ago. She said, God doesn't love us because we're lovable lovable because in our sin none of us are God loves us because he is God and he's chosen to mm -hmm. and the only thing we can do is respond with loving him in return or not mm -hmm. and that's the gift of salvation that we receive Jesus because Jesus for God so loved the world that he gave mm -hmm. his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him may be saved mm -hmm. Jesus did come to condemn us mm -hmm. We're already condemned in our sin, but he is the one that comes to set us free. Hmm. And not only is it salvation, but it's healing, it's fullness of his spirit. It's just, I mean, it's favor, it's prosperity. I told a person this this week, I can't pray you into prosperity, but you can obey yourself into prosperity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's God's got a MO, a mode of operation, how to walk in prosperity. And I ain't talking about being a multimillionaire, but there's something greater than just uh, it's the abundant life. That's having more than enough that I can share with others. That's, you know, Jesus said, I've come, the, the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy in, in John 10:10. Mm -hmm. 10, 10. But I've come that you may have life and that more abundantly. Mm -hmm. And abundant life is I have enough to share with my brother or sister that's in need. Mm -hmm. Whether it's faith yes. to encourage you or whether it's monetary or food or clothes, mm -hmm. you know, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Because mm -hmm. I have more than enough. Yeah. And that's the abundant life. It really is. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. And there may be people that's listening in the audience that may ask themselves this question a lot and may be wondering themselves sometimes. Is God fair? Absolutely. And, and let me let me give you an example why okay. I asked that. Right. Uh, take a couple who is trying to have children. Okay. And they try and they try and they try and they're not able to have children. Right, and then you have others that go out, just you know, just living a any kind of way, and they're having children. Yeah, out of wedlock, and yeah, I understand. Yeah, and then you have people who are flying in a plane, you know, to get to the destination to meet other loved ones, and other things are taking place, and all of a sudden the plane falls from the sky, 
150, 250 souls are blasted into eternity. Mm -hmm. Is God fair? Is See. he fair when um, he allows uh, those that we love to be taken away from us? Sometimes we feel like way too soon. What they say. Is God fair? He is fair and he's just. Again, we live in a fallen world. And sometimes it's people's decisions the reason they have trouble. And sometimes it's, I mean, Michelle and I were una unable to have children. Married for, it will be 32 years this year, but three years ago we adopted a young lady. And we see, the God's, we see God's hand in that. Mm -hmm. So it's not whether we have tribula tribulation, trials, and trouble when, you know, good, bad things happen to good people. Because it's a fallen world. It, we got to remember after Genesis chapter 3, mm -hmm. the whole world shifted. And after the flood, everything shifted. So, but in the midst of the trials, trouble, and tribulation, there is a foundational rock called Jesus. <laughs> one of the most powerful things. I told a guy one time, I said, you know what? You're going to go through tough times. You can go through them with or without Jesus. I recommend him. Mm. I've been through some tough stuff. He's never left nor forsake. Mm -hmm. He's been the peace in the midst of the storm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he calms the storm. And sometimes he rides it right there with you. Mm. And so, I mean, I've lost loved ones. But, you know, my mama dying two years ago. Mm -hmm. Literally, while I'm sitting here, watch her take her last breath. I have such joy in my heart. I almost felt guilty. But I said, Lord, this joy and peace in my heart is so powerful. Mm. And I said, Mama, go home. Because mm -hmm. I knew her last breath here was her first breath there. Wow. You know, what if... I tell people death is a grace gift now mm -hmm. because what if we were attached to these old decayed bodies throughout eternity? Can't, what if cancer, you know, yeah, yeah. cancer doesn't go on the other side. Mm -hmm. So God is fair and he's just. It may not seem like it. And people that are, are go through di diagnosis, cancer, whatever it may be. Whatever. Uh, maybe a person that's going through, had heart surgery and they're just going through it and they feel like, Lord, why me? Yeah, again, fallen world, stuff we eat, stuff we breathe, the chemicals in the air. You know, my dad died of cancer a year and a half after I got saved. Um, but that, uh, cancer is what took to humble my dad. My, my dad gave his life to Christ six weeks before he passed away. Two weeks before he passed away, I saw him lift his hands and worship Jesus. Actually, the day after he died, I got on my knees. I said, Lord, do whatever it takes to humble him, but don't take his life. I prayed that prayer. I said, what have you done? He said, I haven't taken his life. I've given him eternal life. Because ultimately, if a person that knows Christ dies and goes to heaven, and one over here with cancer who doesn't know Christ, mm -hmm. the ultimate gift is to spend eternity in heaven because the ultimate gift of heaven is the presence of Jesus. Yeah. <clears throat> so, God's fair. He's fair. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's fair and just. Yeah. He knows what he's doing even when I don't. That's right. That's right. So, we're, we're in the hands of a all loving God. Yes. Who knows best. He knows best. Mm -hmm. He sees, I had a man call me yesterday concerning a situation in his life. I said, have you ever watched a parade? He said, yeah. I said, what'd you see? A, a band come by, a flow, the fire truck? He goes, yeah. I said, well, God sees the beginning to the end in your life. You're just seeing an event today. He knows, uh, let's make a deal. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the show? Monty. Mm -hmm. Monty, yeah. Yeah. Money Hall? Yeah, door, Monty Hall. Door number one, door number two, door number three. We see the front of the door with the number on it. Mm -hmm. God knows what's on the other side. Yeah. If you let him choose, you yes, get the sir. best every time. <laughs> every time. Every time? Mm -hmm. Every time. Uh, encounters. Yes. What else would you like to share? Well, I wrote down all kinds of encounters here, but here's probably the last one I want to share. <clears throat> I was in a third world country. I saw people encounter God. It didn't matter if we were in a church building. It didn't matter if we were in a medical clinic. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter if we were under a shade tree. And I can remember walking into a paint store and uh, the man there had this skin disease. And so I asked the guy that I'm with who speaks the language and I don't. I said, ask him if I can pray for him. And he asked him and he said yes. So he stepped around from behind the counter and I prayed for him. And God healed him. Hmm. Because it doesn't matter where you are physically. The kingdom of God is at hand. 
Mm -hmm. Because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And so, you know, in Matthew uh, 10, 7 and 8, I believe it is, Jesus said, as you go, doesn't matter where you go, but as you go, mm -hmm. preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you receive, freely you give. A lot of people say, I've heard people say, well, I come to church to meet God. I said, well, I brought him with me when I walked through the door. Cause yes, he, yes. And so we come for corporate worship. And, to, and we all got gifts and we all got, you know, callings and anointings. And so we're mm -hmm. to, those are for each other yes. and for the lost and, you know, mm -hmm. to bring everybody into the kingdom. Yes. And so ultimately, no matter where we are, we have the opportunity to release an encounter because the kingdom of heaven is at hand through our hands. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if we're in Walmart. <laughs> doesn't matter if we're in an underground coal mine. It doesn't matter if I'm in the church. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. But we have to keep that awareness mm -hmm. that he is at hand through our hands at any time. Yes. Having a special encounter yeah. with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Uh, again, there may be someone listening, and we want to have prayer. Yes. Encourage you to pray, and whatever the Lord lays on your heart. And we we pray that uh, this program today today will be your encounter encounter to a life changing experience. Yes. With our Lord and Savior. Yes. As we close, share it with us. So Jacob laid his head down at a place on a rock, and he had a dream that night. He saw angels ascended and descended. And the Lord spoke to him through a dream. Mm -hmm. And when he woke up, he said, the Lord was in this place. And I was unaware. Hmm. <laughs> and so, Father, I pray that everyone listening would have an encounter. Hmm. That they would have an awareness of your presence, Lord. Hmm. That they would have an awareness even, Lord, when the sun rises. Your word said the heavens declare, declares your glory and the firm of the earth literally your handiwork. That a sunrise and a sunset. Mm. Lord, that a, a bird singing or, Lord, like the butterfly that flew by at the right time that, mm. in, in Tim's life. That no matter what it is, Lord, that you're always trying to encounter yes. humanity. That your desire is to dwell with us. And so, Father, I pray that those listening and watching, Lord, would have an encounter with you. Some of them right here, right now, Lord, in their own living room or wherever they are. Lord, that they would just take a moment. Just breathe in the very breath that you give. And that they would just ask for you to become more aware in their life. Because Jesus, you paid the ultimate price for sure us enough. to live with you. Not only now, but throughout eternity. And so, Father, I pray that they no longer live unaware. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen. What a beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful prayer. And what a beautiful encounter mm. that we've had today. We've had. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, on this beautiful spring morning, we think about uh, the birds singing and the blessings of being able to just get up and enjoy the freshness of a new day. Yes. Great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. <laughs> yes. He is faithful. That's he true. is. He is. And so you know, ultimately, we're just look. Um, the weather is changing. We have uh, we have on our target of about three or four tent meetings, just an opportunity for people to have an encounter. Sure. We sure. don't have we all know, it together we, yet. We, we know it's coming up. Yes. Yes. yes, probably start in May, the first one. Yes. Last year we started late, but this year we're going to start a little bit earlier, so that's our plan. We're excited. Well, we're going to, we're going to have you on to talk about when you get ready to start that, because okay. uh, we want this to be a ongoing thing this year, where you come and just share. I think we need this in our lives. You know, I know me and Gwen enjoy, <laughs> enjoy you, and we get a blessing from this, yeah. you know, because yeah. uh, we face everyday situations. Absolutely, we yeah. all do. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, there's tribulation in the world, but Jesus has overcome. He has. He yeah. has defeated death, hell, and the grave. And so, uh, you know, it is an exciting time to be in the kingdom of God. It really is. And I have to mention, Michelle, your, your beautiful wife. Man, what a blessing she is to oh, me. She, she is. is just, they just don't come any better. She's they don't. Just, she is really a spirit-filled person. She is. And I know she is your helpmate and is there for you through times you go through Yeah. Uh, to have someone there. You know, a lot of people say behind every good man is a good woman, but I say beside every good man is a good woman, not yes. behind. Yes. She is, yes. Uh, she's my, I mean, she's just, 
I'd marry her again today. We have an awesome marriage, an awesome life, and she's uh, she has a walk with Jesus that I just uh, I just stand in awe of at times. Just the simplicity of how she hears from him is yeah, just powerful. It is. You know, it is. She'll even tell me, just, well, just like how we met. She yes. told me I was going to meet a man. She one morning she said, "You're going to meet a man who wants to put you on TV." And um, so they said, in fact, it's going to happen today. And afterwards, ask him if he knows Jesus. And that's, you that's remember, that's how it right. happened four or five years ago. Decided, yeah, we yeah. just met. That's I mean, right. She knelt. I looked there and went, okay. <laughs> Isn't that something? So, yeah. Right. And that, that's the encounter. Just the simple voice mm -hmm. of God that just brings, it brings joy. It brings strength. It breaks fear. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it breaks uh, depression. Yes. I mean, a word fitly spoken like apples of gold and pictures of silver. One word from the Lord. One encounter can break depression, oppression. Yes. It's just a simple relationship. That fresh face-to-face -face encounter mm -hmm. with him. That he desires yes. more than I think we desire. Yeah. That's he desires it of us. He does. He does. He does. What a great way to close out this program. And we hope you've enjoyed the Focus program today. Tune in to another edition of our program. Brother Ty's going to be coming back talking about Crossfire and the Tent Revival that will be coming up this spring. We encourage you to uh, be prayerful, uh, yes. share this program with someone, and uh, remember to continue to pray Yes, that God will, will move in your life as he is moving in ours. Yes. And he will bless you in ways that you cannot even conceive. <laughs> Unexpected butterflies. That's sometimes. right. <laughs> I love it. You I love never it. never know. I love it. Never Tune in to another edition of Focus. I'm your host, Tim Thomas. By all means, keep sharing the dream. Yeah.